Thank you for joining Market Simulation Call for Fall 2020 Release and Independent 2020 Releases. My name is Anshuman Vadya. I'm your Market Simulation Coordinator. Today is October 5, 2020. Calls and webinars are recorded for stakeholder convenience, allowing those who are unable to attend to listen to the recordings after the meetings. The recordings will be publicly available on the ISO webpage for a limited time following the meetings. The recordings and any related transcriptions should not be reprinted without the ISO permission. We have the following agenda to follow today. We'll talk about map stage availability. We'll then talk about the known issues for ADS that are still remaining. Then we'll switch over to ADS replacement transition updates, cut over activities at the plants, and then we'll talk about independent 2020 releases, structured scenarios, registration details, initiatives and timelines, and then we'll talk separately about uh, the, each initiatives and independent 2020 release. All right. App stage availability can be found on portalmap.kaiser.com. Currently, we have uh, CMRI UN API closer for Tuesday 10.6 to Wednesday 10.7. Uh, on stage, we have a ADS cutover dry run today uh, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, everybody is invited to join in to see this cutover and how it's going to look. Uh, we'll use the same market simulation call details as the current call, so you can just dial in from the same information. Any questions on the availability? All right. Moving on. Currently, we just have one ADS issue that we're tracking. Uh, it's the the profile issue that when we are transferring from one environment to another environment, we we will support to share or port over those profiles across the environments. So please send us a CD ticket if you want any user's profile need to be transferred from, let's say, map stage environment to stage environment or later stage to production. Are there any updates from our CAISO SME site uh, for those? I see you are on mute, so if you want to maybe press star six or space bar, that also works. Yeah, uh, hey, uh, Anshuman, no, I can. Uh, I think uh, we don't have any more update on this uh, non issues list. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the one, uh, if anybody is still interested to um, port over any profile, please let us know so that we can help you uh, help you with that. Thank you for this. I know we want to next. ADS replacement transition cutover dry run in stage slash parallel operations environment. Uh, as I said earlier, we'll be doing a cutover dry run in the stage environment uh, today from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. You can also refer to the ISO calendar and the web conference details are same as the market simulation call. For Delphi client access to stage, you may need to update the servers.xml file available on the dev site under ADS. Any questions on the stage parallel operation cutover dry run? Hi, Ashman. This is Chen Yu. Good, good afternoon. A quick hi, question. Chen. Yeah, hi. Uh, regarding for ADS, has Kaiser conducted the QRB? Uh, Quality Review Board meeting, and what is the result? That, uh, we are actually covering that information. Next, next slide, let me pull that up. Okay. Well, uh, trying, do you want to give an update on this? Um, sure. Thank you. And I have um, Prince as well, and uh, Ferdos on to support us, as well as John Williams. So I'll go over the updates and reiteration of some of the information that um, has been provided since last week. 
Um, thanks for everyone for staying tuned in to ADS and your participation. So um, we do plan the, um, so to answer Chinese's question, I'll lead with that, um, is that we do have a tentative um, a quality review board um, approval for the ADS transition. And we have some more details as to what that condition um, entails and the prerequisites that are associated to that in the next slide. But let me cover um, this slide and then we'll kind of go through the whole presentation. Please feel free to stop me for, for any questions along the way, but there there's gonna be a lot of information here. So um, we are on track for the dry run today. Um, it's gonna be the same um, bridge information as the WebEx and that is on the public calendar. So please tune into that if you're participating. Uh, for production to shift gears is we had uh, planned the October 7th transition. We have since spread that out into a phase one on October 7th and then a phase two on October 8th. And again, we'll provide more information on the next slide. Um, for our internal cutover to the new client, um, ISO operations does plan to transition um, to the new client uh, and, and start using the new ADS uh, upon the, uh, when the transition is done this week. Um, there are enhancements that we've specified and we have a further breakdown of as far as what um, functionality or data and features will be available in the new ADS versus um, will be disabled. And to add on to that, um, we called out that the three functionalities for DOTT, unannounced AS, and RTCD commitment are the ones that will be um, in that second category. They'll be inactive upon the ADS transition. Um, and then as far as what to expect from our operators, even though we're, we'll be using the new client, even if you're not cut over, um, to minimize any impact to that production procedures and operational procedures um, and to keep things uh, operation smooth, we will um, continue to conduct AS testing and operating instructions uh, using the current process um, that we're all familiar with, um, so via the phone and things um, like that. So SCs can continue to um, uh, to take action as we do today um, for for those uh, functionalities. Okay, and then just a clarification there for new data that will be available. So in the new ADS, if you plan to use that upon um, the transition, there is data that will be available in the new ADS that won't be available in the existing um, application, although, um, again, you can use either version. It's just that the, the new tool will have um, additional data. And then we had, um, again, a reminder that we will be making an exception for the API major version support. So instead of our normal protocol of supporting only two ver major versions, we will support V6 of the API in addition to the new V8 and then the uh, V7 current production version. Okay, so we can move on to the next slide, Anshuman. Um, and I, again, just because the information is so critical, you'll see that on a few different slides that so we, uh, we repeat some of this information. But again, so the ISO receives tentative or conditional approval from our quality review board for the transition that's planned for now, the 7th through the 8th. And what the most critical takeaway here, and we have this detailed in um, slides later, is that we are um, adding criteria for customers to demonstrate production connectivity for this transition due to the significant infrastructure changes. So um, we have uh, significant changes on the infrastructure and network on our side that, um, that we want to kind of um, just make sure that the customers are able to validate to minimize any impact and issues um, before the start of the transition on October 7th. And due to the criticality of the ADS um, product and functionality, we wanted to make sure that we have confirmation from each of the customers and ADS users um, that uh, they're able to connect on an, um, before we start these major activities to prevent any, um, any issues um, during those, those critical times. And we'll have more detail in the following slides, um, as well as references to the customer communications that have gone out since uh, last week. Um, we did open that window of um, connectivity for production starting October 1st, and we had that um, until October 5th. And so we're really urging you to, 
to do that and follow the steps in that notice that way we've called out later on in the presentation to confirm that so with um so that that is the key um the key prerequisite for um this transition and then i'll go through some of the other information um and then the way we can go into the details of how to do that so the transition as we've mentioned a couple times has been adjusted to stand um two phases so we'll have a phase one and a phase two in production and that is again due to the significant um, infrastructure and network changes that we have we wanted to spread out and isolate the infrastructure activities and have um, customers uh, have us be able to implement that have you be able to verify um, the that uh, the current functionality and then um, and then the next day we would actually finish the transition um, of, uh, of the ADS uh, um, changes and then I think uh, some, I'll highlight some other changes to this is the Delphi client and the V6 APIs will be available right now through um, the end of January with that cutover date being uh, February 1st at this time. Um, our deployment time in production uh, for both phase one and phase two will be 1030 to 1230 Pacific time. And we'll also have a bridge open for both of those days. Um, and then the ADS interruption in production, we've adjusted that to um, uh, further minimize impact to the ramps during the time. So instead of 10:15, we have the 11:15 to 11:40 um, time where um, an interruption would be expected. Um, and then let's see. So I think uh, below we already referenced the uh, what to expect on the market. Um, so we will be utilizing a market disconnect feature, um, and then also um, once uh, you know where the new ADS is available, then um, we will um, utilize, uh, I believe the, um, uh, I think it was the follow um, the last uh, last solution. So so we'll confirm that in the in the next table. Okay, um, and then the. Sure. Um, yeah, go ahead. Thanks. Hi, this is Adrian. I just want to make yep. a small amendment to your prior statement. Um, just for everyone's clarification, our quality review board approved fully the ADS going to production. I think what the condition that Frank was mentioning before was something minor and was resolved since. So in case you're wondering what the condition was, there's no condition at this point. We have full QRV approval for going production. Thank you, Adrian, for that distinction. From a product and um, uh, implementation readiness perspective, we are ready. I think the, the timing as far as when we do that um, transition is has that prerequisite. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. All right, so then for production, we do plan to have a bridge and then that is not on the public calendar yet, but that will be um, out there and we will send out um, communication once that is published as well for the phase one and phase two transition. Okay, so Antrimon, if you could go to the next slide. Okay, so this is where we really wanted to call out um, uh, specifically the prerequisite and this is um, action that's required from, um, Actually, um, I will let uh, Prince speak to this. Prince, could you take over? Sure, yeah. Hey, thank you, Trang. So as Trang alluded to in the prior slides and the conversation there, while we're product ready, uh, we wanted to exercise abundant caution in terms of the actual rollout itself because of the network changes and uh, the, the complexity of that. Uh, Last week, Thursday-ish, you should have uh, gotten notification where we're requesting all of the participants who currently connect to our ADS uh, tool to confirm that they can connect to this uh, new IP address uh, that we've provided. Uh, we're putting that in there as a as pretty much like as a must-have on our own front before we would go live. And that's kind of what Trang was alluding to earlier as the, the conditional approval. Conditional meaning we're going to wait till everybody confirms that they can access these new IP addresses before we cut over um, in our own environment as well. So uh, between this slide and the next slide, there's a bunch of steps that are provided. There's steps one and two uh, to, that we want every available user to perform. And uh, step three on the next slide, which must be performed if your organization currently uses the ADS APIs. 
And that's irrespective of whatever uh, API version that you use currently. So, uh, Anshuman, if you can go to the next slide. Uh, listed here, and again, this information has been emailed out last week, Thursday as well. Uh, depending on uh, whether you use the API or not, uh, you may or may not have to go through with step three, but step uh, one and two, we really want everybody to make sure that they can access these URLs that are uh, in steps 1.3 and then 2.3. Um, that's, that's very key, and in order for you to be able to do so, you are going to have to ensure that your firewalls are open and so on. And we just cannot take the risk of uh, deploying or trying to cut over uh, the infrastructure changes on our end if the customers are not ready. And so that's why we're kind of like just waiting for that. And our request is that everybody perform this uh, as soon as possible so that it gives uh, us the opportunity to go live and then begin this uh, close to three and a half month or four month transition that we have uh, at the moment. Uh, so if you have any questions or you run into any issues while you're trying to connect or perform these steps, absolutely reach out to our uh, customer service team, reach out to our service desk and so on so that we can assist you with that. Uh, we've seen about, I wanna say, uh, a sizable portion of our customer base has already confirmed that they are hitting it and have, con and have told us. And so we thank you for those of you who have already. Uh, for those of you who are trying and are encountering an issue, uh, let us know. We're happy to help. And if a uh, few of you are still looking to schedule this on your own end, uh, we're just requesting that you do so at the earlier. Uh, Anshuman, mm -hmm. can we go to the next one? Uh, can I interrupt? This is Isaac from RC. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, we are, I guess, one of the some of our servers are not able to connect to the WS, uh, the API, as well as the Delphi client environment. So uh, send out a couple of CD tickets uh, to, to reflect that. And I was wondering if uh, the ISO can help us understand uh, why we're not able to connect on some of our servers. And we are on our end also looking at our firewall rules as well as uh, making sure that uh, the ports are open. Uh, but just wanted to get a confirmation if we could uh, 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 look into the, the sessions that we tried to, to log um, to see if um, if that was indeed a problem, or is there other, any other uh, underlying issues that we still need to address besides the, the firewall? Oh, thank you for raising that. I know we've had a, a, quite a few tickets, and the team is actively working that list. Uh, I know several customers, they were reaching out yesterday. Do you have your city cases, uh, the numbers handy, so we can take a look and make sure that's being worked on as well? Sure, let me see. And if you don't have it handy, you can always email us too at uh, marketsim.chrysler.com. Uh, but if you do have it, or later on in this call, if you want to just mention what that number is, we can look that up for sure. Okay, yeah, the, the ticket, num the ticket oh, number is 229617. 229617? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll take a look at that. Appreciate it. Hi, um, okay. I'm Shuman. Hi, Laura. Hi. So we're working with Diana on uh, <clears throat> testing AGS uh, API. Uh, so far, we weren't successful, um, but uh, shall we open ticket or we still continue working with Diana on that, with Kaliso Group? So. Uh, yeah, we are all working on the same ticket number. We don't want multiple tickets on the same issues, so. Uh, Diane already has a CD ticket number on that, and uh, we'll get you an update by today. Yeah, but I don't think we, I have ticket on that. We just we just uh, work with her this morning. If we don't have any ticket, then uh, and I'm included in that email chain, then I'll request our team to, or maybe can you create a CD ticket for us to track? Yes, I will do it right away. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Hey, um, this right. is Linda from Anaheim. Um, I just have a quick question on the ADS. Um, I also put in the city ticket as well. It seems like you guys are um, showing a different type of um, link to go into to get the connectivity. Um, so I just want to give you my city ticket number as well, if you don't mind following it up. It's, um, two, okay, it's 229-552. All right, thank you, Linda. We'll take a look at that. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Again, thank you for everybody who's either given us a positive confirmation or for people who are facing issues logging these tickets. It gives us a good understanding of where we are with uh, connectivity and uh, who's able to get in, who's not, and who's uh, you know having whatever issues so we can gauge overall readiness and schedule and so on. So appreciate everybody's support on this. Hi, this is Chen Yu from PGE. Um, one request, since the information is uh, critical, uh, it's a very good information in terms of cutover and understand where CAISO is at. Um, is it possible, CAISO, to post this information either under the ADS uh, folder or somewhere in the public that we can look up to if we need to? Hey, Tony, I think that's a good idea. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and then post this information on our developer.kaiso.com site. Um, so another question uh, on, on Shoma. Thank you. Yes, Nora, go ahead. Uh, so it says uh, today by 5 p.m. we need to finish all our connectivity uh, testing. Is it correct? Yes, that will be that will be ideal, and we are doing a dry run on stage from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Okay, and tomorrow <clears throat> it will not be available to us, right? Uh, and let yes. Prince speak on that. Hey, no. In order, this is Prince here. Um, ideally, we want we want to have as many people connected beforehand itself. Uh, and part of like Trang was saying earlier, is we're currently putting our actual go live tentatively on hold while we're awaiting for people to connect. Uh, in order for us to go live on 10:7, uh, we really need everybody to give us confirmation by 5 p.m. today. Uh, I know it's not probably realistic that everybody will give us that connectivity message uh, by 5 o'clock, uh, which means it's going to be uh, our go live is going to flip a little bit as we wait for more customers to confirm. But again, if you have an opportunity, please do connect. Uh, technically, the ping, if for somebody whose firewall is already open, uh, should take like a minute. Uh, but I understand sometimes, you know, firewalls may not be open. You may have to internally work with your own IT firm, IT teams to get the firewalls approved for opening, actually have it open and then do that. So uh, please, please do your very best to try and get that in. Yeah, we did try this morning, it wasn't successful. So we try. Sure. We are waiting for further instructions. Yeah. That's all I saw, okay, and I'm opening ticket, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I guess by five o'clock, if everybody can give a shot and then confirm that yes, you are either in or facing an issue, at least we'll get the lay of the land uh, to be able to put that out there. Okay, great. Thank you. But, all right. And then uh, what we have on slide 11 uh, shows our high-level plan. Uh, we're trying to take this to production in two phases. The, phase, the first phase would be primarily related to our network changes that we're making. Uh, the new UI will not be available at that point. We're just going to have network-related changes available. We're going to ask that all of you uh, join a bridge by 10.30 a.m. Um, on the go-live date for phase one, which is currently listed as October 7th, uh, but obviously that date is going to depend on successful confirmation from the information that I had shared earlier and so on. And then uh, phase two, uh, which would be the following day at 11.15 a.m. is when we're actually going to be launching the new uh, ADS UI. So we really wanted to separate out the network upgrade from the, the tool launch so that uh, we can eliminate variables if at all something were to come up. Uh, post this, uh, uh, 
this meeting, we will be uh, updating this slide to give you additional details uh, in the MP action uh, comments column uh, so that you have further information. For example, uh, uh, by so-and-so time in the morning, we want to ensure that you've tested the new firewalls. ECN customers have to ensure that they can connect. Uh, by 11.15, what do you want? To? So we'll provide additional information in that MP action column as well. So look for an updated slide uh, after this meeting. Okay. Uh, any questions or thoughts? I have a question. I'm Shuman Sure uh, to bother you. Uh, this is Nora. I just want to confirm with you that we have a workaround in case we're not going live with uh, V8. So V7 will still be working and running with no issue, right? In production. Yes, Nora, that is the plan. Okay, great. Thank you so much. This is Kelly at APS. Could you go back one slide, please? Um, and then where um, where can I find this slide deck? It will be posted on the release planning website today so that you can access this information. Also, as per what Prince said, that we will post this information on the developer side too, so you can pull it up from there. Thank you. I just wanted to get a screenshot of this one before you get it posted. Sure. Appreciate it. I'm done. Thanks. All right, so if uh, no further questions on this, I will hand it back over to Anshuman. And again, we're going to, I'm, I'm sincerely requesting that everybody join us at uh, 3 o'clock uh, for our uh, coordinated dry run of the cutover in our stage environment. All right, Anshuman. I have you. a question actually on this. Uh, this is Ray calling from PGE. In case it does slip, uh, in case you don't get enough confirmations by 5 p.m. today, what what's the next time you think you'll actually deploy phase one then for ADS? So I don't have an exact ETA for you, uh, but we will provide, and again, you know, much of this content of this con uh, confirmation is just coming out. Uh, join us at the rug tomorrow. At the rug tomorrow, we'll look to provide uh, a, a, a schedule we will also, in our 3 to 5 o'clock uh, staged cutover uh, in stage, uh, we'll also let, look to see if we're getting any uh, learnings out of it. Uh, so if we come up with something that looks like is a heavy lift, then our next tentative go-live date will be based off of that. But if everything goes smooth and then the only thing that's holding us up is this customer confirmation that they've opened up and been able to access our IP, then that might give us the opportunity to have a much earlier go live date. So unfortunately, I don't have the exact answer for you, uh, but join us at the rug tomorrow because part of that decision making will depend on uh, how many customers have connected by five o'clock today, how many customers uh, or what learnings do we get from our dry run today. Okay, thank you. You bet. All right. Uh, thank you, Prince, trying for the, this critical update. And thank you, everybody, for the questions. Uh, moving on. So with this new ADS replacement going live, uh, we will be providing the following features in production. And the new features, which are going with the functionality of DOTT and announced AS test and RTCD commitment, they will be disabled unless everybody has moved in into the new ADS. And once they have, that is the cutover date for production that will uh, enable these features too. All right. Thank you, Anshman. And also, can I just add uh, Prince here again? Uh, on the prior slide, we made an update there because now we're showing that this is going to be a two-day uh, cutover. Uh, we've kind of bulleted out to show what will be available on 10.7 and what will be available on 10.8 as well. So just wanted to call that out for attention. Thank you, Prince. Anybody has any questions on the new updates?
These are the cutover activities at a glance. I just wanted to show this again. Uh, not much has changed here from the last time we looked into this. We're going to have uh, new code will be available on 10.7 and 10.8 for uh, production. And then on 10.16, we're going to end the parallel operations. 4th of November, we'll have a hard cutover for map stage and stage. And on 1st of February, we'll have a hard cut over for production. These are the new additional IPs that are listed here that needs to be whitelisted so that we can access the new ADS. Just wanted to show this information again as we're doing the dry run cut over today and, you know, October 7 and October 8 production deployment. All right, if nobody has any more questions regarding the ADS cutover uh, activities, then we can move on to the independent 2020 releases. All right. We have increased the registration deadline to October 9th. You can still register for independent 2020 release. Uh, you can send your registration details to marketsim at kaiser.com. These are the initiatives and timelines for independent 2020 releases market simulation. As you can see that we have moved a couple of projects start date. As you can see, interdite deviation settlements has been moved to 20th of, of October, and we're planning to do a structured simulation for that project on 21st. The latest one that is coming, as we discussed last time, is the FRP improvements buffer and min, whose so start date and structured simulation is on 13th of October. Currently, we have one more project whose date is defined, the nodal pricing model project. We will be performing structured scenario for that project on 27th of October. Anybody has any questions on these timelines? Okay, moving on. Alyssa Canyon Phase 5 will test between October 13 to October 28, and business requirement specification documents are available at the following link. FRP improvements, buffer and min uh, will test between October 13 to October 28. The structured scenario document is available at the following link. Energy Imbalance Market Enhancements 2020. We'll do the unstructured testing for this particular project will be available between October 19 to October 30. BOP and BSAP currently available in map stage, and the unstructured scenarios document available at the following location. Hybrid Resources Phase 1. Testing time is between October 26 to November 13 and the BRS document is available at the following location. Commitment cost and default energy bid enhancements will test between July 27 to November 24, and the training document for this particular project is available at the link shown here. Nodal pricing model, as we discussed earlier, the structured scenarios will be performed on 27th of October, and the structured scenario document is available at the following location. Intertide deviation settlement, we'll test it between October 20 to November 20, and the structured scenario document is available at this location. Please. Uh, stop me if you have any questions for any of these projects, and we can discuss those. Symmetrical wheeling timeline is between October 20 to November 20. We invite all the market participants to do unstructured testing during this time. Settlements Q4 slash winter release. We have a third draft configuration output file that was supposed to go on 10.2 is 
now will be available on 9th of October. Plan to deploy it on 6th of October, and we'll have connectivity testing for PAC from 13th of October to 21st of October. We'll perform the structured scenarios between 27th of October to 4th of November. Technical documentation is available at the following link. Any questions for the winter release? All right. That's all I have for today. We'll have our next meeting on next Thursday, October Hi, 8th. Ashman. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yeah, sorry, I, I was uh, I was mute. Um, I have two questions. So one is that, um, is there going to be a settlement calendar for the independent release published? Yes, that's a good point. And we were, uh, we were going to publish it. It should be available by today or by tomorrow. Oh, okay. And also for some of the initiatives that have structured test scenarios, also, you're going to have a trade day that associate with that, right? That is correct. Uh, Good. We haven't. We were planning to. Are you talking about the ground Groundhog Day? Uh, yes. Oh no, actually, okay. that that is more for the settlement data, right? Normally, right. for the structured test scenarios, I think Kaiso usually have a trade day that wanting to run on what trade day for that structure scenario, for all the scenarios. Right, and you can see in the third date column here, uh, we are mm -hmm. mentioning the dates on which, uh, when we're gonna do the structured scenarios for these particular projects. Oh, okay, okay, that's great, uh, good to know. Also for hybrid resource phase one, I know we asked this question before, um, is there going to be any structured test scenarios? So we are reviewing this project right now. We got the technical information from Siemens uh, pretty late. So we're actually reviewing it and we're trying to see if we can have some structured scenario for this particular project. And that's why it says to be decided and we will let you know more on this topic uh, by end of this week, by Thursday. Okay, great, thank you so much. Thank you for the question. Any other questions or concerns? All right, thank you everyone for joining the call. We'll see you again on Thursday at 2 p.m.